So, what's up? What's up? It's uh, time for so done. Way past funny. Twenty-five years, um, with your host, uh, Sugar years, Ray. Number one radio show on Long Island called Battle Zone Radio. Um, comedy was always something I wanted to get into. And G D Fenderson. Join us as we take a look back at the first time comedians took the stage with this week's guest, Justin McDonald. It's time to get down and get dope with Gun Way Past Funny. Hi, welcome to Way Past Funny. I'm G.D. Fenderson, certified forensic humorist. I'm with my co-host, Shira Ray. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? And in the middle, uh, like like a, a sandwich, uh, is our guest this week. That's uh, Justin McDonald out of New York, right? Out of New York? Long Island, New York. Long right. Island. Now, do you say on Long, Long Island, Island, New York? Yeah. Yeah. In or on? <laughs> you know, I beats me. <laughs> I don't know. I've never... I've never been faced with that question. I always say I'm going to Long Island or coming <laughs> back from Long Island or leaving Long Island. I never say like, "Hey, I'm on Long Island." Like, when, so when I get, yeah, I live, guess on. When people say, when you say you live in, do you say you live in Long Island? You live on Long Island. In in Long Island, I say okay. I live in Long Island. Or on okay. Long, I'll, I'll use I'll use both. I guess it just depends on the on, on the the mannerisms. I guess we're having at that particular time. Oh, no one's ever asked me that question. I see people asking that all the time. Is it in or on? And I'm like, well, we, you're, technically you are on it, but you're also in it. Yeah. So you're, you're in the boundary. doesn't really matter. Limits, but you're physically on it. Yeah. On right, it, so, yeah. So tell people a little bit about yourself, uh, what you're doing and, you know, when you're not making people laugh or whatever. I didn't have the outlet because there wasn't anything really here for a 16 year old or a 15 year old to kind of do to try to get involved in comedy. So I went with music and I did music until I was in my mid thirties. And then I started comedy. Um, I'm one of those people. I'm a, I'm a believer. I don't want to be on my deathbed going, well, I should have done this or I should have done that, or I should have tried this and I should have tried that. So, and I'm the type to just jump, you know, two feet in, you know. So I got started in comedy about six years ago. Um, and I've been doing it ever since. And, you know, it's it's actually been a very, it's been more like a therapy than uh, than anything else for me. And plus, I'm, an int- I'm, I'm more of an introvert. It helps me get out and actually meet people and talk to people. And uh, I, I have to say the comedy world a lot different than the hip hop world as far as um, friendliness and, and the non, the non competition and and people being uplifting over uh, feeling like you're always at battle with someone. So you don't have good, well in hip hop and I'm not a hip hop aficionado, uh, the sheer fact that I use the, the word aficionado to describe my relationship with hip hop lets you know that I'm not a hip hop. <laughs> 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 uh, but, but, I, but I remember, I remember back in the day, we used to have dance offs and stuff when we, we had disputes and stuff. Uh, and I guess comedy could use a few of those <laughs> dance offs. <Yes. laughs> I guess the, that's what no, the worst battle is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was raised on 90s hip hop you know, uh, 80s and 90s hip hop, and it was very rugged and very much um, street music. And there wasn't, clicks just didn't get along. It was never like you'd go to another person's show and be like, yeah, good fucking job, man. Fucking great songs, or, you know, where with comedy, it's it's like the complete opposite. Comics show up to other comic shows, comics show, uh, uh, show support. At least that's what I found here. I was about uh, to say, where, 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 where I'm at. 
I you live in a world with unicorn spark or something. <laughs> you have that kind of com you have that community out there, uh, Ray. Y'all got that comedy love out there in Texas. I'm gonna say like this for everywhere I've ever been, there is clicks and there are people that want to get in. But other than that, I don't see any love. Like if they ain't making somebody some money, they're not messing with you. Yeah. Yeah, there's it's it's still clicky. It's still a little clicky where certain comics just you know, they mesh together and it, it it's clicky. But the difference that I noticed between clicky and hip hop and clicky and comedy is we're still cool if you're with that click. When I was in hip hop, if you were with that click, we most likely weren't cool. If you weren't down with us, you weren't we weren't down with you type of thing. So but yeah, I I, I have heard that and maybe I'm delusional because I don't go out looking for uh I don't go out looking for the nonsense. Like I don't I hang around with no nonsense people. I don't want to be around people who are looking to you know uh, bad mouth other people or you know looking to to get over on somebody for something. I've been around the block too many times. I can't deal with people like that. So I, I just I, I stay away. So maybe that's why that's my experience. Well maybe I'll I just need maybe I just need, oh, ahead, maybe I just need to no, I was gonna say maybe I just need to stay out of them she, uh, shitty clubs and start doing better clubs, and then I won't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> now you can set up your set up your first set for us. Uh, like, how long did it take you to write it? Did you did you know you're gonna be doing your first set, or was it like a surprise where you just sit in the audience and somebody goes, "Hey, struggle"? Um, <laughs> no, uh, it, it wasn't a surprise. Um, it was something that when I had my radio show, um, I kind of did off the cuff to begin with. Um, and then I started doing it while I was still on the radio. So it was something that I, I, I started doing. Actually, it, it happened because I started doing a comedy podcast where I was having people on and we were interviewing and talking to each other and bullshitting and, having, and, and laughing. And uh, a, a booker approached me and was like, hey, do you do stand up? And I was like, no, but you know what? I, I want to. So he booked me for a show, and I think I had, a, you know, maybe a month in advance to write. Okay. So I wrote what I thought, I wrote at the time what I thought was funny. Um, reflecting back, maybe not so much. All right, so I'm, we're going to play the first half because it was a five, basically it was a five minute set. So we're going to listen. I was to told that to do, yeah, six minutes. Six minutes. Okay, so we're going to watch the first half of it, and we're going to uh, talk about it on the other side. Oh, this is going to be real cringeworthy. Oh, uh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you watch it yet, Ray? Nope. I wanted to be shocked with the audience. Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. All right, here we go. How you doing, everybody? My name is Struggle. I got to do this. Now, that's obviously not my real name. It's not the name I was birthed with. Uh, the name that I was given at birth was Justin. And I gotta say, I fucking hate that name. That is the worst name you can give a child. That is the type of name you give a child when you want them to get bullied till about 12, 13 years old. That's the type of name you give a child when you want to emasculate them from birth. If your name is Justin, there's a 90% chance your parents wanted a girl. I know what the ladies are out there saying. No, I love that name. I love that name. Of course you do. You add an E. It's Justine. It's a feminine name. And you always get the best nicknames when you got the name Justin, right? Justin Time. Justin Incredible. I'm going to tell you from personal experience, I'm always fucking late. And at best, I'm average. So through hip-hop and being on the radio, I was able to create the persona, which is Struggle. And I did this for about 20 years. It didn't matter who I met. I always said my name was Struggle. Didn't matter who it was, business promoter, club owner, priest, cop, ladies. And usually with the ladies, it went down like this. Hi, what's your name? I know, y'all don't sound like that, but fucking deal with it, okay? <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Oh, my name, my name's Struggle. What? <laughs> struggle, my name's Struggle. Struggle? Yeah, Struggle. What's the name that your parents gave you? 
fucking struggle. My parents were hippies. This is the name they gave me. I had to deal with it as a child. Now you want me to deal with it as an adult? You know what? Forget about it. Forget about it. I'm out of here. And that's when I get the sympathetic apology. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I go from a six to an eight on the sexy scale. Oh, those are good times. But those times are over. Got married a few years back to my lovely wife. So all my expectations are more. Fellas, you know what I'm talking about. It's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Don't believe me, that's my wife. We got a beautiful son, five years old. His name is uh, Justin. <laughs> now, that, uh, that actually is the biggest laugh you got for that, if I remember right, right? That's, that was the biggest laugh you got for that, uh, for your set. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, somebody tried to call me when they were in the middle of the video, and oh, okay. I think my phone got disconnected. Okay. Can you hear us okay now? Just give me one second. I'm sorry, guys. Let me grab a different set of headphones. I can barely hear you. Give me one second. There we go. Sorry about that. Oh, no sweat. No sweat. Uh, so, go. yes, uh, the, Justin, uh, the Justin one with my son. Yes, that got the biggest pop, um, which actually made me, I hadn't watched that video in uh, years. And so it made me reevaluate that maybe I should rewrite that somehow and bring it back because, yeah, that definitely got the biggest pop out of, out of everything. Now, there was a, oh, go ahead. I was like, do you want my eyes to be in about it? What happened? I said, do you want my honest opinion about it? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell you that uh, you need a foot in your ass. <laughs> the material and you're not even fucking using it. Like You can make that work, dude. That shit is good. And the callbacks, uh, they were on point, man. Like That's technical book one-on-one right there. I was told because, I'm, I'm a, because of where I write, you know, especially with music and before, before I ever did music, I was a writer that I too much fat in it and I had to cut a little bit of the fat out. So if I cut the fat out of that set, I could make that maybe a good three minute set. If I really just, yeah. If, if, if you make it more relatable, it'll be funny. Like the whole shit was good. It was just the way, you know what I'm saying? Like the crowd you're in shit like that. Like you got to test it other places to see exactly what to trim off. But it's just like uh, any beef. You don't want to trim off too much fat because then you start getting away from the good shit. So it's like you got to know what to slice off and what not to. Yeah, absolutely. Now I, I, now, I think you kind of like you had a good premise. I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but you didn't develop it any much further. Or was it your, when you were talking about when you got the sympathy rating from the girls, when you were, you said, okay, I'm a six, but once they, once they, Felt like they bad mouth you. You went up two points. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the it's almost like it's almost like pity sets. You know, a little a little sympathy bump in the rating, and and I you know, that was one of the things I said. Oh yeah, you could have actually developed that a little bit. You know, because it would it almost sounded like you treated it like a throwaway line. Uh well, at the time I didn't know what a throwaway line was. That was literally my first set ever. Like I yeah. didn't polish that thing. I didn't. Go, I, I didn't go to open mics because I was working nights at the time. So I was doing that set in front of a mirror at my job when I had five or 10 minutes to practice. Um, that set actually started out to be like 15 minutes long when I wrote it and I had to cut it down. Um, and over the years, um, sometimes I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go back to some of that stuff, not in that exact way. Cause obviously yeah. I'm more polished now as, as a comedian. Um, but yeah, now that I've reheard it, um, I'm, I'm rethinking that I can actually probably add a couple of them jokes back into my set and they would work. They'd work really, it'd work well. Now with the, when you say your, my son's name is Justin, when you, did you think of that punchline first and then work the story toward to get, to get to that point? Or did you, or did you tell the story and then like say, wait a minute, I need to be going somewhere. Hey, here's a good ending. How did that develop? All that shit is real. Uh, yeah, but so you can, okay. So the, 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 the struggle thing, the struggle thing, there are people on this planet that have met me that honestly believe my name is struggle. 
that I, I would not give that I never gave my real name. I hate the name Justin. Um, and um, when I gave my son that name, it, it, it was because me and my wife couldn't we couldn't come to terms together with what we felt was a good name. I wanted to give him something cool like Dallas or Phoenix or some crazy name. And she wanted to, she wanted them to give him something, you know, let's name him Mike. And I'm like, fucking no, no. I was like, if I'm going to give him a simple plain name, he's just going to get my name and he'll be Justin jr. And we'll just call him. Jeff. I actually, at the particular time he was born, um, Jimmer Fredette was playing and I wanted to name him Jimmer. And my wife was like, fuck you. No. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> <clears throat> and so it ended up being Justin, but no, yeah, most, almost all of that is, is true. And it was just me basically finding what I do in my particular life as funny. Like the fact that I named my son, Justin, even though I hate that name, I thought was funny. The fact that I, I, I actually made people call me struggle. I mean, there were girls at the time that I was sleeping with that couldn't call me by my name. They had to call me struggle. I would not but answer they, them by that you name. You were sleeping with them. That's probably why they, maybe they were struggling too. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> like, well, I'm I struggling to enjoy this. <laughs> yeah. I, I gave them an out. I'm like, here you go. There's your out. You can just say a struggle. <laughs> say my name. Oh, yeah. Struggle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They were like, when your parents picked you up from school, what did they call you? Struggle. That was my name. They could, can I get struggle out of class, please? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, and yeah, like I said, it's, it's one of those things that, yeah, I, I mean, there's people on this planet that that you'll bump into and you'll say, hey, do you know Justin McDonald? And they'll go, struggle? <laughs> like, they don't know my real name. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's and, and once again, you know, from being in hip hop, that was my hip hop name. That name was given to me by Eric Sermon's sister. Kim Sermon gave me that name. So um, I took that name with pride um, over the fact that my parents named me Justin. <laughs> I was more hey, hey, let more, him talk you out of it. I, I let him talk, and I let him talk me out of it. You should be. Should I let be him talk talking. me out of it. I should be. I should be. And and if I bump, if I ever bumped into Kim Sermon, she would probably say the same thing. She'd be like, "What the hell did you do? Why'd you do that? Get him, Kim. I'm gonna be in the background. Get him, Kim. Get him." <laughs> <laughs> so uh see i i, would, I asked you about that you, you basically you prepared by rehearsing in the mirror yeah okay i've been uh, that's how my first set my my first set i rehearsed in front of uh, my camcorder okay uh, I, I mean, I would, and my, I kept thinking about, it was a, a very Zen thing. I was thinking, I would say, if I can make the camcorder laugh, I can make the audience laugh, you know, and I would just keep performing over and over again in front of the camcorder, trying to make the camcorder laugh, which of course you, it's very Zen because you really can't do it. And if you can't do it, yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, yeah. I, was like, I, I want, I want whatever you're smoking. Yeah, that's it. So, that was, so like, um, I, I, I did it in front of a mirror because um, before I ever got into comedy, like I said, I was a huge fan of comedy. I watched, I used to, I used to stay up late night when I was real young and watch Pryor, watch Kinnison, watch uh, Carlin, all, all these different. So I wanted my motion on the stage. So I was watching my body motion. To make sure I wasn't just standing there and I was actually moving and and uh which is something I don't do as much now as a uh as I wouldn't call myself a seasoned comic but as a comic who has a few years under the belt um I don't do it as much anymore uh, I find it distracting for myself and I think it's distracting for the crowd but when you're Dave Chappelle and you want to run around the fucking stage you can you have every right to do that because they're going to listen to you no matter what. When you're just a McDonald, you got to do whatever you can to make sure you keep the attention focused on what you're saying and uh, not necessarily what you're doing unless you're one of those comics that that's part of your act, where your movements are part of your act. I was going to say, because I, I prefer, like, a, I, I've kind of, like, gotten used to big audiences. And so I move, but I move slower. Like my first set, probably like your first set, I was darting all over the place. You know, you know, it was like HD was an ADHD on 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 crack. Yeah. You know, it was like you know, and I was all over the place. But I, I thought it was to, on purpose. But no, oh well, 
it was on purpose because I had it was I was on stage with like an audience of like 200 people, you know, so I was trying to get everybody involved. But I was moving so fast that I was um, probably losing them as well. And the material wasn't that great either. So, <laughs> so but I'm going to blame most of it on my movements and not the material. <laughs> there you go. There you go. What do they say? What do they say? It's never the crowd. It's always you. <laughs> which is which is complete and utter fucking bullshit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes there's sometimes unless you're Bill Burr going off about how Philadelphia sucks in Philadelphia, that's the only way you're, you're if you're bombing that you're gonna get out of there out of that. Have you guys ever seen that clip? I've I've seen that shit and I am I am with Bill on that one for for a little bit uh, because <laughs> fuck Philly Philly sucks it does uh, most of them up north states suck and you guys know it so don't I get mad. Tend- I have a tendency to I have a tendency to agree I I I, I hate where I live so. Actually, I, I enjoy northern New York. I like being in the mountains and on the lake and shit and fishing and shit like that. But I, I hate lower New York. I'm not – I don't like the big crowds. and I don't like being around a lot of people um, in the – you know, not necessarily – I love being in front of a big crowd and, and when there's an audience. But when I have to sh- rub shoulders with people to get to the fucking comedy club, that's when I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. So it, it shouldn't be like that at all, but it is for some strange-ass reason. Why is that? I had to deal with people I don't like just to get on a freaking show. My talent should get me on the show. I I listen, everybody 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 that I know that ever moved out of New York never fucking came back. So <laughs> that tells you something right there. <laughs> well, I, I'm kind of in under the impression that some of the people a lot of the people who become comics become comics because they need therapy. And comedy is how they get their therapy or do their therapy or work out their shit. And so True. the people who are making decisions on whether or not you can be on their show are dysfunctional to begin with. So True. if their dysfunction or if your if your comedy makes their dysfunction more apparent, I don't think you're going to get on their shows. If your if True. your dysfunction because your if your dysfunction complements their dysfunction. Or make yes. their dysfunction look okay, then you'll wind up on stage with them. I don't wind up on stage with anybody locally. Uh, not, I mean, I don't. I literally, if I get more work, I I get more work out of the state of Maryland than I do in the state of Maryland every year. Uh, have Have you ever done uh, the Magfest down in Maryland at the at the Gaylord Hotel? Fagfest at the Gaylord. Yeah. The Gaylord Motel. It's actually down towards. It's it's literally at the end of Maryland. It's at the border of Virginia and Maryland. It's a music, arts, and gaming festival. I don't know if they do comedy there anymore, but I did a I did a uh, I did a comedy set down. I drove from New York down to Maryland. Um, they they paid for my room, um, paid for all my accommodations pretty much. But it's a it's music, arts, and gaming. So. It was extremely weird. Like half my people, I had about two or three hundred people in the audience, and half of those people were fucking furries. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never done one of those, but yeah, that was that was the first that was the first festival I ever did was uh, in Maryland. The the music, arts, and gaming festival was it was. It was big. They took up the whole whole hotel. There was just characters everywhere. It was. It was I wish I could have brought my son because he would have he would have enjoyed it. There was Zelda characters. There was everything. Any any video game you could think of. There was the character. It was it was it was pretty cool. But it definitely wasn't comedy based. We'll just say that. Were they receptive so, to comedy? Was the audience receptive to comedy? Yeah, and had I had a little advance notice on what I was really dealing with, I probably would have <laughs> done a little bit more to accommodate uh, the furries, I guess. <laughs> um, so you didn't have but, any funny furry material? <laughs> no, no. Uh, also, you know, it wasn't as, this was a few years ago, so it wasn't as popular as it is now, I guess, um, in society with, with the furries. Uh. Nice people, nice people. But there is some shit that I don't want to be involved in. 
Well, part of the reason why they can be nice is because their dysfunction, they can they can put their dysfunction out there. They don't have they 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 probably weren't as nice when they couldn't wear their stuff out loud or out you know, in public. But now that now that they have a safe place to do that, they they can be whole, you know. Yeah. You know, and I think that. I think that's all. Like I think that's all serial killers want is just a place where they could be themselves, and they just take it out on us. <laughs> yeah. they, I just want to stab people. Where's there, why is there a place to <laughs> stab people? <laughs> that's why I'm frustrated. Because if you could be serial killers, most of them wind up making up their own fantasy world. You know, you know like like Dahmer, he got this fantasy world where people just his, they wouldn't leave him. That's why he killed them. And ate them, so he could always have a piece of them with him. You know, yeah, maybe he maybe he should have went. Maybe he should have went to open mic and might have <laughs> might have helped him out a little bit. <laughs> Except for you don't want him killing on stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh. so, yeah. What? I, listen, you're you're completely correct. Any any comic I have ever met has some type of mental disorder. <laughs> Yes. Sometimes there, there, there's there's something wrong, you, you know, of whether course. they got beat, whether they got beat by their parent or they were bullied or whatever the whatever the case may be. One too many times with the switch uh, to the ass, whatever it is. Uh, but it's it, it's they're all always trying to work out some type of mental disability. Yes, that yeah. uh, that we ha- that we have. Yeah. Now, if you know if you know what your your issue is when you go into comedy, I think that can be helpful. Because you can kind of like lean into it, but some people get into comedy and they don't know what the issue is, and all of a sudden they're standing on stage at an open mic, you know, and they're telling this story about their uncle touching them, and all of a sudden everybody in the audience is just, what the fuck is wrong with him? Like, yeah, Bro. My, my uncle, yo, yeah, yeah, yo, <laughs> yo, I I had that happen, I had that happen at an open mic. This guy talk, This guy started talking about his first time having sexual engagement with another man, and how it was awkward for him. And he was doing it at an open mic, and I was just like, "I don't, I can't, I, no, I, I'm gonna go outside and smoke a cigarette." <laughs> like, the kid, the kid was a little nutty. I mean, to begin with, but like he thought that this was going to be funny, and he like explained from beginning to end what exactly happened, and there was no comedy in this whatsoever i'm like you're just talking about your sexual engagement with another person and i'm fine with whatever you want to be but i don't need to hear this shit i didn't come to here i didn't come here for this <laughs> came here to pra- came here to practice comedy and get the fuck out of here i don't i don't, I don't want to hear about how your step uncle uh came in your room one night and diddled you yeah, and, and said, you're going to thank me one day when you're on stage telling the joke about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least work out the joke. At least work out the joke. Like, shit. <laughs> well, now he doesn't cry himself to sleep. He actually laughs himself to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> or cries. Or cries. Who knows? <laughs> he laughs until he cries. Yeah, I, I was at a, I did a show where, like, I'm, well, I'm 60, I'm 63. And the host was. Uh, you don't look at it. You don't look at. You don't look at day past forty one. So that's why I only show this much. If I show anything below <laughs> here, you're like, oh my god, he's only sixty three. Those tits. Those are <laughs> those are seventy five year old man tits. You know that's why the camera is like this. That's that's why this is like this. Ray saw Ray saw more of me, and he goes, you know, can we make it a smaller set? I'm like, why? No. So, I would have closed my eyes up. I didn't see any of that. Don't let him lie to you. I'm like, I, I, I'm like what's up with him? Okay, you see shit in. Yeah, Ray was. Ray said, "Wear that shirt with the yellow stripe, so you don't show anything below the yellow stripe." So that's that's uh, so every show, I, every one of these episodes, you're saying we'll be wearing this shirt, so they know not to show anything below that. <laughs> Hi, I'm GD Finison, certified forensic humorist and co-host of Done Way Past Funny. My pronouns are asking for way too much money, and my amateur nouns are uncoachable. This episode with special guest Justin McDonald ran way beyond our thirty-minute runtime for our show. So we have made it into two 30-minute shows. You have just watched part one. Please join us on our next episode for part two. And when you come back to join us, bring a friend.